Hey guys, this is four top tips for medics in Foxhole. Number one, your medic loadout. So here we have a typical medic loadout. You will have a trauma kit, a pistol, a first aid kit, a radio, some binoculars, bandages, blood plasma, some ammunition for your pistol and a hammer. Now, the medic needs a trauma kit and a first aid kit to heal and pick up soldiers on the battlefield. The first aid kit heals people who are bloody. So if you see someone running around, they look like they've got blood splattered over them. If you go up to them with a med kit and you press three on your keyboard, you can go up to them and right mouse and left mouse click to heal somebody, okay? Now, uh, the, the trauma kit takes up slot one in your inventory. And that is why I decide to tell you guys to have a pistol in your loadout so that you can quickly have a sidearm to help you out in case you become under fire by uh, from enemies. If you had, uh, if you have a take a rifle, you would have to unequip your trauma kit and then put a rifle on. And also, you'd be quite heavy as well if you were carrying a main primary weapon uh, alongside a trauma kit, because both these things are fairly heavy. The trauma kit takes blood plasma, and the first aid kit takes bandages. Bandages stack, whereas blood plasma does not. I've also got the binoculars and the radio here. So with binoculars, you can see on the front line and you can see if there are any bodies that are any picking up or people that need healing. And the radio, uh, I've got there so that you can check your map to see where the front line is and see if people are going to be flanking you. Number two, utilizing an ambulance. So guys, how many basic materials is required for an ambulance? So you go to a garage like this, you can press E, and you can see here is one of the first items, and it costs 150 basic materials. It also requires tech, so you can't build this right at the start of a game currently. Um, you have to wait for tech to be unlocked to be able to build this. But once you have 150 beamers in your inventory, you select this, make sure you're not blocking the construction area, and then you just hit it with a hammer until uh, it is complete. And then you obviously you just fill it up with diesel, and off you go. So guys, why do I have a hammer on me? The reason why I have a hammer is that I can potentially quickly bring out a hammer and repair my ambulance if it becomes under fire. I also always store 100 BMATs inside the ambulance for that reason. So that was always a good idea. Also, inside an ambulance, you can stack blood plasma as well as bandages. I'd also leave some spaces available in the ambulance empty so that you can put uh, critically wounded men in there so that you can then take them to the hospital to be made into shirts. Number three hospitals and critically wounded soldiers so over here we have a hospital this is a city hospital and a city hospital has loads and loads of bed spaces where you can submit critically wounded soldiers and you can see here someone had did this already and those bodies were made into soldier supplies and soldier supplies are the thing that people use to spawn into everyday locations such as a fob town hall or bunker base you can access this hospital while being in an ambulance by just going up to it and pressing E. You can then left click any critically wounded soldiers and then click submit patient once it's in the hospital's inventory. Also, this type of hospital, you can actually go inside. And it's quite a durable building compared to a field hospital, which we'll go on to next. To build a field hospital, guys, bring out your hammer and press B. And then the fourth icon along is the field hospital. Here we go. So if we want to build a field hospital, guys, we would place it near a road, like so, and do this. It requires 200 BMATs to build, and it is very, very fragile. So now we're on the front line, guys, at Jade Cove. Let's go try and find some critically wounded people. Oh, look, here's someone on now. Let us unlock this vehicle so our friend can put this guy in. And there we go. So basically, what you would do when you normally would find a guy like this... He'd be like, if I was to drop him, i just press one on my keyboard, and he'd be lying around on the ground like that. If I wanted to put him in my ambulance, I would go up and press E to him. Go to my ambulance, press E on the vehicle, and then click Submit Large Item. Boom. And there he is inside the vehicle. This isn't a player. A t this is a dead body from a player, but this player, you know, just respawns. And this is kind of like a, just a, a item on the ground that you can utilize and a resource basically so then you would take this guy into this hospital which i will now show once this hospital has been completed and also chat it's a good idea you know to leave your ambulance unlocked not too close to the front lines but where you have some front you know where, where you got a lot of friendlies nearby but it's not so far that you haven't got to run a marathon to get back to the ambulance and this is also why chat i would also say not to be carrying too much stuff on you 
as if you carry too much stuff on you, then when you pick up a, um, a critically wounded soldier, you'll become very slowed when you're moving around with him. So that's why don't take a primary weapon, but take a sidearm, as it is a lot less heavier. And there we go. Now the hospital is complete. What I could do, as you can see here, he's putting a guy inside the uh, the hospital, submit large item, and then you press that button, and then what you'll see is slowly that this this uh, these icons here will slowly start to lighten and go all the way up to the top. And then in a, about five five to ten minutes, they will then turn into shirts, which you then can submit to the base. Our, our ambulance was uh, hot, caught under some artillery fire moments ago, so that's why we carried those extra beamets on, so we can repair it. Like so. So guys, as you can see here, any second now, we'll get 12 shirts, because this guy's almost done. There we go. Grab those shirts, put from the truck, and then all you need to do is just drive straight to the base of operations that we're utilising, which is this one over here. Press E on the bunker base, and then click that, and then click submit. And then boom, we're back up to 77 shirts. And this way, guys, effectively the front becomes self-sustaining, as you're not relying on logistics to bring you down shirts in the form of crates. You can get your shirts via the critically wounded soldiers and using a field hospital or a, or a city hospital. Number four, how to utilize the medkit and trauma in action. So here's a dying soldier. He's going to drop him by me now. So watch how I bring out my trauma kit to revive him. And then I use my med kit to heal him up to full health. And then I right, le right and left mouse click together to heal the guy. And I keep doing this until the blood goes away and it says no one needs treatment complete. And there you go. Done. So guys, what I'll do now is you'll see maybe 5 to 10 minutes of a medic in action so you know what you're doing on the front line. Get our binoculars out. And let's just see if we can maybe heal anybody on the front line and bring back some more bodies for this uh, field hospital. As we don't have active AI on this front line, I'm not willing to bring my ambulance up any further forward here. Even though we have a lot of friendly armor here, um, it is quite risky to do so. So that, that medic there has got that guy sorted. So we're just going to keep running around the map. Maybe pick up extra bandages that we might find on the ground. Maybe take a gas mask if it's a really bad front line. This guy's wounded here, so we go up to him press... And heal him with the right left mouse click by pressing 3. Let's see if we run around a bit and see if we can find anybody here. Got to be very careful though. as We haven't got a good gun to be able to combat the enemy with. Or we're actually hit, getting hit ourselves there. Oh, there's a guy now that's bleeding out. We'll just equip our bandage ourselves so we can heal ourselves. And then we'll try and get that guy back. It looks like Tidy might try and pick him up and bring him back. He is. So this is what you want to do. You want to try and... When there's a lapse in enemy fire, you want to go in there and try and pick that guy up. And then you want to get your trauma kit out and you can try and pick him up. There we go. So those guys have got it. You don't want to have two people using the plasma trauma kit at the same time. Otherwise, you'll all use up one of one plasma when you don't really want to waste that, right? And also because you become more of a target to enemies if there's more of you clumped up in one spot. Let's watch out for that. Here, this guy took damage from that, so let's quickly go up here and heal him. There you go. Let's try and see if we can recover this guy real quick. Okay, he got hit, so let's pull him back. Let's try and get him up with the trauma kit. Bring him back a little bit away from danger. And then drop him down, press 1 to get my trauma kit out, and then we can pick him up. And then press 3, med kit, right mouse, left click, together, and then we heal this guy up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Generally, if you're a guy getting healed, you want to make sure you're, you're, you're focused and looking towards the enemy, not the other way. So you're ready to, to counter fire if I um, get shot at. Because I can't defend myself when I'm healing, so you want the guy that is getting healed needs to be the one to deal with any danger. And that's just, and it's just a good habit just to check from side to side of the battlefield just to see if you can find any critically wounded. Because critically wounded... Oh, there's one there. There's one right there on the ground there. So we're going to try and recover this guy if I can. I'll... It's going to be a bit risky. There's a collie right there. Very risky for me to do this, but I'm going to go anyway. So now I've got the body. I'm going to try and bring him back. Can we get shot at? But now I just bring this body back to my ambulance or the field hospital. So what we do now is we just come up to this field hospital. Press E on the field hospital. Oh, what might happen is if you, if you come too overcovered, you might drop the body. But don't worry, you can just turn around and just pick it back up again. And then go to the field hospital and then click submit large item. And then click 
It's a bit patient. However, it says fill hospital at its capacity and can receive no more, more people. So you can see here, this uh, the hospital is half, you know, half ready on, on some of these patients here. Uh, so what we might do instead is actually just take the critically wounded soldier and we'll put him into the ambulance. So we can put any e excess men into here. And then... Once they're, once they're stored inside a field hospital or a uh, ambulance, we can then take the body. Um, you know, it'll be permanently in there unless you take it out and drop it on the floor. These critically wounded soldiers, if left AFK on the ground for more than a couple of minutes, they will disappear. So you want to try and grab them while you can. And in this war, I believe one body makes 12 shirts. Normally it's about six. But because this is a really big war... Here we go. There's another guy here. He's going to drop this guy on the ground. Let's get him up. Here we go. Get this guy up nice and proper. Grab my med kit out. And let's heal him. There you go. And medics are so important in the front line because it saves us a lot of shirts as well. And equipment. Because, you know, every time someone dies and they don't get revived, they have to go back and maybe, you know, get, bring more equipment out of the base to go again. Um, so getting getting them healed up saves a lot of shirts and is very helpful for the, uh, for the team effort. There you go. Let's go. And that is how to be an effective medic. Hopefully that was useful. I've also um, put 100 BMETs inside the field hospital in case it needs emergency repairs as well. So it's there to be able to repair the hospital if it gets under fire. Hi right, lads, thanks for watching that video. If you want more content, click up here. Or click over here to click on other content. But make sure to click on that middle button to subscribe to the channel. Okay. And uh, I stream every single day on twitch.tv forward slash helping hands. Catch you in the next one, guys. Take care.